viewers, my name is Yao Sampa. Today is a beautiful, rainy um, Wednesday, 15th of June, 2022. Today we'll talk about food. Uh, no better day to talk about food than I read it. We'll talk about food safety. Um, and we're privileged to have Madame Costina of Food Consumer Protection joining us. Um, we'll go into that conversation, but before that, we will take a quick break. Welcome back, viewers. So this is Spotlight, and, and we highlight food safety um, today. So we'll go straight into the conversations. Um, we'll start with Mr. Kofi Capito. Um, uh, you're welcome, um, Mr. Capito. Can you hear us, sir? Thank you very much. It's an honor to have you here, sir. Um, so um, we will start with um, a conversation. Um, is, it, is it the view, generally, surveying this landscape of consumer protection do you think that food is safe do we consume safe in ghana food safe in ghana um, let's start on yeah, the broad I, view i would say i say we do unfortunately we might have a few uh um areas that needs to be uh uh protected more but in general uh consumption of food is very safe in ghana if not there will be an uh, a pandemic every week or every day in Ghana. So generally, your view is that food is safe. So the in incidents yeah. like Mawako, in your view, would be um, the outliers, is it? Yeah, because you see, you always have some uh, people who would uh, engage in whether practices that it is intentional or unintentional. In this particular case, a uh, joint like Mawako uh, is supposed to put in a lot of measures to make sure that uh, the environment, not just the food, even the environment, the storage of the uh, 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 food items, uh, the hygienic conditions should be um, very much uh, uh, a priority to management. Um, let's, uh, Madam Faustina of Osua Minta, if you're here, um, can you hear us, please? Please, uh, if you can unmute you yourself. Me? Yes, can you hear us, please? Yes, I can. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great to have you here. Um, Mr. Capito is of mm -hmm. the view that food is generally safe in Ghana in terms of our consumption. As a dietitian, do you have a, do you have a different opinion? I, I will agree with what Mr. Capito said because, like he said, if foods were not safe in Ghana, we would have a serious pandemic. And you will realize that um, almost every day or every week we'll be reporting cases of cholera outbreaks, dysentery outbreaks, typhoid outbreaks. So although periodically or seasonally we may have these um, diseases popping up due to um, certain reasons, generally as a country, we seem to have uh, grips when it comes to food safety, or I would say like our foods are not posing a serious threat to our health, as um, people may think. Um, this can also be attributed to the way we prepare our meals. You realize that for most Ghanaian meals, the food is usually cooked for a very long period of time and having or exposing the microorganisms to these high temperatures for longer periods of time ends up destroying these microorganisms. So it gives us some 
safety when it comes to our food. But then there are instances where when foods are consumed raw, mm. you are highly likely to expose yourself to microorganisms because they do not pass through any heat process to mm. destroy some of the microorganisms. Mm. And also if um, food is not stored under right temperatures, it can also lead to the growth of microorganisms mm. and this can cause um, foodborne illnesses. So generally, as a country, when we talk about safety in terms of the microbial load of mm. our food, um, unless probably we have like a, an analysis, a microbial analysis mm. to um, check the microbial count of the foods we eat. Mm. But so far as we haven't or we are not constantly experiencing these foodborne illness outbreaks, we will say fairly, we are doing fairly well. That, that's really interesting. a lot to be done. Mm, that, that's interesting. So um, is, is, the, is the view that we're not at the behest of the strength of our immune system? Um, because there are opinions, I've heard, I've heard some very credible people suggest that we are just at the mercy of a stronger immune system. Yeah. yeah. Let, let's, let, let's stay with you, um, um, Madam Faustina. Now, you say that we may have to do an analysis and check the micro, microbial load in order to ascertain. Yeah. Um, t tell me about all the food sold close to a gutter for which we think are the best. Tell me about all the foods we like and all the joints we find amazing. In, from your understanding, are those environments not prone to a lot more microbial loads? Yes, so generally... Um, our atmosphere, I mean, COVID has come to show us that uh, we have a lot of viruses, not only viruses, but in different types of microorganisms in our atmosphere. So we have bacteria, we have um, viruses all in the atmosphere. And depending on the load on the food item, it may cause disease or not. Mm. Um, when we look at how foods are presented, in Ghana, when you go to our open markets, you realize that the food is openly displayed. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to buy tomatoes, it's openly displayed. Mm -hmm. But it's, we go back to what I said earlier, that for us, if someone is going to use tomatoes, maybe use it in preparing stew or soup, which will be exposed to higher temperatures. But then in instances where you are going to consume it raw, then if it is because of where it is displayed, if the microbial load is high, then that means that you stand at risk of getting a food infection. Then this takes us back to the issue you mentioned about our immunity. Mm. As our bodies are exposed to these microorganisms, our bodies build immunity against them. Mm. But then there is a threshold to which our bodies cannot fight these microorganisms. And when we reach that threshold, then we experience the symptoms of this foodborne illnesses. So if it's, let's say, if you've consumed food that is overdosed with salmonella typhi, you are going to get typhoid. Mm. And if you are exposed to um, food that, is, um, that has a high load of vibrio cholera, you are going to get cholera. So it's, it's a dicey situation. I would say because over and over again, we are exposed as Ghanaians, our bodies build immunity against these organisms. Right. But for every individual, there is a threshold that your body cannot be able to fight against that microorganism. So you are going to um, experience symptoms of foodborne illnesses. Generally, when you look at our markets, our open markets, you realize that the conditions are really not hygienic. Mm. And there's been instances over and over again where um, food and drugs authority have gone to markets and these issues have been brought to the media. Mm. And we know that there are groups that do advocacy against these things. I remember when I was in the university undergrad, I, I joined this um, group, that's the University of Ghana Consumer Advocacy Group. And... <laughs> Um, there were times we had to, we met with Profi Capito, the likes of Mr. Profi Capito, mm. and I remember one time we went to the market, it was a camp, um, an awareness creation, we went on a float, 
and we went to Makola Market and we went to the um, market women to educate them on how best they should um, display their food, telling them to put um, nets over their food, and if the food is being displayed on the floor, we so 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 we'll come, Madam Fasina, we'll to, come to we'll come to the details of how to make food safer. Um, okay. But let's go to Mr. Mm -hmm. Capito. Um, Mr. Capito, generally the, the the rules to sell food, you need a permit. What's the general landscape in terms of the rules? You think that the FDA is living up to what its mandate is? Um, is it protecting um, um, consumers enough? I would say the FDA is doing a tremendous job mm. on the environment that they are operating in. I would say kudos to their CEO, Mrs. Uh, Delise uh, Mimi Dakun. Mm. Uh, are doing a wonderful job. But look, let me tell you what. It's not just the idea. We have assemblies. We have public health uh, uh, inspectorate of various but The question is, what are they doing? Yes, the FDA is a regulator. The FDA is the final arbiter uh, when all these agencies uh, refuse or cannot do their job. So they step in and say, hold on. Let's, let's uh, either call down the environment or make sure that people are protected. After an investigation, we will go back and see whether the person or the people who were, were, were affected or accused has the right to go back and do their business. So I would say the FDA is doing a wonderful job. But contrary to that, I would say that what happened to, I remember when I was a kid, my mother would run Helter Skelter when she hears that the town council mm. men are coming. Town okay. the que What happened to the town council men? Mm. I mean, in other jurisdictions, if you, I was here in Ghana watching Dr. Vela, mm. and I saw that some council members who were in charge of making sure that you don't deposit uh, your waste on the side of the street or where they are not supposed to be were shown actually looking at various uh, dustbins to identify whether there's an address. Once they see the address, they go back to the house and ask you, how come your refuse is doing, uh, what, what, what is your refuse doing around the corner? That is not your address. The question is, can we do better? Yes, mm. I agree. But the institutions mandated, okay, I would say the FDA is doing a very good job based on the pictures that you are showing. Yes, the FDA can go and tell or educate the market women how to do storage and everything. But it is somebody's business on a daily basis to make sure that the women adhere to what is being done. And in this part of the world, sometimes I ask myself, as we are getting older, 65 years of independence, it looks like we are doing worse than we started when we're, you know, um, uh, but, uh, just had now independence because that's a very interesting up, statement. Yeah, growing up, I saw Ghana working. Growing up, things were working. Interesting. As an old man, things working anymore. I'll give you a simple example. I walk a lot. Just last week, I walked from uh, Rich Runabout all mm. the way to the airport junction and back. It's about eight miles. Mm. I was surprised. I was holding a water bottle and I, I was trying to test myself. Do you know the only place that there was a dustbin was at the entrance of 37 Military Hospital when I was going from the Ridge Runabout to, the airport. to airport. Coming, coming back, the only place I saw a dustbin was the front of the oil filling station opposite Golden Toilet. And I'm sure that was their own dustbin. It wasn't the, right. the, the city's right. dustbin. So right. can you imagine you walk eight miles right. and you have no dustbin, nothing to, to dispose of? What would I do? I put it on the street. Probably it will end up in the gutter. Some lady will come and sit by it at night and send me Coco or watch it. Right. So, Mr. Capito, let's stay on the issues. What, and I think that I really like the, the angle you've taken us. I mean, you said that under the circumstances, FDA is doing an amazing job. But some other stakeholders are failing in, in duty. In terms of food safety, who are the stakeholders? In, in terms of circumscribing all the stakeholders in 
making sure consumers have a safe food and a healthy environment. Who are the stakeholders? And can you help us label in terms of who is failing at what? Well, let me give a simple example. When it comes to meat or poultry, right? Okay. Do you know the veterinary people are all very much worried about the way our uh, slaughterhouses are? Okay, because when you go to our slaughterhouses, it's nothing to write home about. Okay, the food that is coming from your slaughterhouse to your table sometimes is not the best. But like my young lady said, because of the way we prepare our food, because uh, we don't eat raw meat, mm. we actually cook or burn it mm. till it's black. Mm. So a lot of the <laughs> bath things might not even be there when, we, when it gets to the table. Right. But that's not the best way. Look, let me tell you what. The veterinary people... Uh, the municipal and district assemblies, uh, 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 the the ally allied science uh, people. Uh, the young lady who was talking. She was at a university. I'm sure if you ask her on a yearly basis, how many students come out of school of hygiene? And the question is, how many of them actually get employed per their qualification? Mm. They all end up at banks as uh, uh, bank tellers. Tell us, uh, we cannot train somebody for four years and then because there's no job, he has to do an alternative of becoming a cashier. So right. the whole four years that they were in school, they wasted their time. Right. I mean, in other jurisdictions, they put them where they need them. Right. Okay. We, 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 we tend not to care about the Ghanaian anymore. I'm talking about people in authority. Right. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about average Ghanaian. And I'm glad that at least your station has made it a point to bring this to the forefront for us to talk about it. Most of the media houses just wants to do, uh, what should I say, sound bite. You know, look, this Mawako incident, we should really look at it and see how we will make sure that it won't happen again. Uh, if you were, if you, if, per your experience, if you were betting, would you bet it won't happen again? After 65 years, thinking that things are getting worse, um, can, you, can, you, can you bet this won't happen again? Uh, can, we, can we prevent it? Yes, we can. But uh, is it likely that not just Mawako, but something like that can happen again? I mean, uh, we are humans. We make mistakes. Right. This is not the only country that might be affected with that. Uh, as you all know, even baby formless right. have recourse. Right. Baby formless have recourse. Right. So it's not, it, I don't think it's going to be unique to Ghana. But the, what do we do when it happens? Like I said, I'm happy the action that the FDA has taken. The FDA says they've done investigation. They've identified the causes of these things. They have recommended some measures to Mawako for Mawako to do. They've actually fined Mawako per the laws of Ghana that allows them to do it. So it, it could be a deterrent for somebody else not to repeat what Mawako did. Okay, Mr. Capito, um, just before we move to my, Madam Faustina, just as a consumer protection agency, how are we holding the, the sellers, the vendors accountable beyond what, what the regulators can do? So if there's somebody watching, what, what, what's our stake um, as individuals? You see, you see, you mentioned something that was very funny, that every delicious and good food is sold by the gutter. The question is, why would you want to go and buy something by the gutter? As a consumer, you also have a responsibility. If you go to the market and the tomato is displayed on the bare floor, why would you want to buy tomatoes displayed on the bare floor? If it's floor? the only option... If you go to the market and pick... No, it's not the only option. It's the cheapest option that you have chosen. Right. Okay. Yes. I would say that you are doing it based on your income, pocket, which is fine. Right. But it doesn't think about your health. Your health is more important than what your pocket can afford. Mm. Look, let me give you a typical example. You go sometimes and you see meat, meat displayed on the floor mm. in the market. Right. And people actually buy it. Why would you want to go and buy meat that is displayed on the floor? Okay, we consumers also has a responsibility to know that, look, they say if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, and quacks like a it duck, must as a well duck. be a duck. So I don't why you, the consumer, you should not also 
take your life into your own hand and say, look, yesterday I made a mistake. Today I don't have to repeat it. So to me, uh, 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 we should do more education. We should do more of these shows that we are doing to get today. Right. Hopefully somebody listening uh, or, or hearing us somewhere would advise somebody that this is what he said on the radio, so don't repeat it. Okay, Mr. Capito, please stay with us, Madam Faustina. Um, I mean, it is not a, it's not in question that healthy foods are expensive. How does the viewers balance that? Talk to us about how do we keep food safe and yet within budget? Madam Faustina, okay, can you so hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can yes. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So that claim that healthy food is expensive, I think it's a very um, wrong thing to say mm. because in the olden days, I think today we really go back to the olden days. In the olden days, when um, our forefathers were eating the um, ampefi, yam and PC with um, kontomri, abum, and amane, it was a healthy meal. Right. Was it expensive? No. Currently, you can still eat your ampesi with kontomri, abum, and amane, or salmon, or tuna. It's a healthy meal. Is it expensive? No. Mm. I think we've put it in our minds that um, healthy meals are meals that probably you get from high-end supermarkets or even like westernized meals. I think generally when you speak to people and you want to understand what their understanding of healthy is, they think, oh, it's what the foreigners eat. So they are looking primarily at salads right. or let's say fruits. Right. But then our Ghanaian, our local Ghanaian meals are equally very healthy. So far as you prepare them, um, bearing in mind your portions as well as balance. Mm. So if so, if I take our Ghanaian meals, I can list a lot of them. We have our kinky with pepper and fish and you can chop onions and tomatoes on the side. We have banku with okra. We have tea sets with ayo. We have a lot of healthy meals as Ghanaians. Just that sometimes the issue with our Ghanaian meals when it comes to its healthiness, primarily you would have to look at it on a case by case basis per individual. So if I take a meal for myself and the portions I'm eating are more than my body needs, then I would classify it as unhealthy, not because the nutrient quantities are not adequate, but because I'm exceeding what my body needs. Mm. So healthy meal as a Ghanaian, you don't need a lot of money or you don't need to be shopping in a high-end supermarket for you to be able to afford healthy meals. Everyone, depending on your budget, can prepare meals that are healthy. And I think for us as Ghanaians, as we are talking about this whole issue of food safety, and we mentioned the fact that, oh, because of the way we cook our meals, we are, we are less um, at risk of ha having these foodborne Ill illnesses because we expose our foods to high temperatures. But then it also brings out an argument. Now it seems we are sacrificing nutrient quality right. over Right. Food safety. Right. So, because we should bear in mind that as we are cooking these foods for a very longer period of time at higher temperatures, we are destroying some heat sensitive nutrients. Mm. So, primarily, most of the vitamins may end up being um, destroyed because of the high temperatures we are exposing it to. So, you realize that at the end of the day, your, meal, your food, in terms of nutrients, may have just the carbohydrates, the fats, and the proteins, and the minerals, which are less resistant to heat. So when it comes to the vitamin aspect, we will be deficient. So that is the, like, you have to look at it from these two angles. Are we willing to, do we want to sacrifice nutrient quality over food safety? No, both are very important. So as Mr. Capito was saying, we have a role to play as consumers when you are going to buy your food, you, you need to make sure that where you are shopping from, the conditions are hygienic. Where you are buying your food from is hygienic. And when you are preparing it, you do not need to expose it to so much heat for a very longer period of time, which ends up destroying the nutrients. 
Right. So both are important and we need to be mindful of these things, food safety and food hygiene. And also on the issue of safety, for instance, um, currently, globally, everyone is talking about food security, food security. And when we look at food security, one of the pillars of food security is utilization. That is how well our body is able to utilize the nutrients that we gain from our food. Mm. And how well our body will utilize the food in a way safety has a role to play or hygiene. Right. So if the food we are buying are, um, cons or are prepared or bought from unhygienic conditions, in the end, we are just consuming microorganisms, which will affect the way our body will be able to absorb these nutrients. Because if you are infected with these microorganisms, you're either going to get diarrhea or vomiting. That's what most gastrointestinal diseases present that way. And when you have diarrhea or vomiting, you basically just bring out all the food you ate. So your body is not able to absorb the nutrients that was in the food. So you've really not done anything. Right. So safety is very important when it comes to how well our body can use up nutrients that we gain, we get from food. So it's a fact that if the food is not safe, um, it, it cannot be food in, any, in the first place because if it's not safe, what you're eating may as well be a poison. Exactly. Right. Exactly. If right. the food is not safe, it's not food, really. Right. But let's, let's stay with the idea. So take our average community in Ghana. Um, Mr. Capito says we probably go for the tomatoes on the floor because it's the cheapest. Yeah. Um, but people yeah. make that election for the cheapest on the floor, not because they are irrational, because that is what is within their income bracket. And so as a mm -hmm. dietitian, knowing the average average community structure of our market and our people how do you advise if a viewer is watching how do they translate those things we get on the average which may have a lot of microbial load into healthy food um, and healthy consumption patterns okay so um this is quite dicey because then you are also looking at the economic situation of right. the person. But I think for for this to be successful, that's what um, Mr. Kofi Capito's point really comes to bear, that the agencies or the institutions that are in charge of making sure that foods are sold under hygienic conditions need to be working because really, when it comes to the economic situation, that's a whole economic lecture on its own. But then what can we do, given no bearing in mind that our people do not have high purchasing power to be able to um, afford certain things? What can we do to make the environment or the food environment safe for them? Mm. So that even with the little money you have, you are able to um, make good choices or buy, buy food that is... Um, Safer. So yes. we we rely mostly on the agencies responsible, the consumer agencies, to give some form of education to the sellers and also make sure that the laws work. I mean, growing up, where when you go to Accra Central, initially between Accra Central Police Barracks and Cocoa Board, it was a very clear road. Now when you get there. It's a whole market center. And I asked myself, how did we get here? Because this wasn't that situation five years ago. And now in that place is a whole market center. You see someone's displaying cabbage on the floor, actually on the roadside, mm. just along a curve. And no one is doing anything about it. We want these things for it to go and get out of hands. And it becomes a tough situation when you want to um, take these women off the street. So we need our agencies, all agencies, to work hand in hand to ensure that the food environment is safe. Now, after the agencies have done this, generally there are some people that are very resistant to some form of change. So as we are talking right now, we are saying that these sports foods, um, sports vegetables are not good. I mean, this education has been done over and over. 
and sometimes people still go for it. Right. So it's important that we are having this discussion that for people to understand that food safety is a big issue. I mean, you may get diarrhea, vomiting, and you'll be fine. But in in certain instances, you can actually die. Mm. So maybe if people are made aware of the fact that, I mean, it's not only diarrhea and vomiting, but then death is also a possibility if you have foodborne illnesses. Probably that will give them a shock and they will want to make better decisions when it comes to their food choices. And because if you know that if you are no more, who will take care of your children? All these things are very important. So as consumers, we have to make sure that we make good decisions based on the information we get over and over and over again, that it's not safe to buy food from the gutters. I mean, sometimes when you are there, you even see flies on the food and all right. that. Right. The fact that your immune system seems to be good and it's always doing the job for you. Mind you, there's a point where your immune system will fail you. So Talking about flies, to... tell us about the insecticides and the quails um, vendors use to disperse flies. How, how, does, how does that make the food any safer? So um, these are chemicals and Generally, for insecticides, for instance, you are told that um, insecticide sprays is written on the can that when you spray, you should um, leave the area for some time. It tells you that inhaling these chemicals is not good for your body. So the thing about these chemicals is you may not have the, usually you do not have the effect instantly, so you will not know. So it builds up builds up and then one time you are diagnosed with kidney problem and you really do not understand how did you get kidney problem to you you think you eat well you don't have a family history like i don't drink nothing but then exposure to these heavy metals and chemicals cause gradually can cause a um, weakening of our systems so it can be a lung issue it can be a kidney problem it can be a liver problem all depends on how often you are exposed to these chemicals. Yeah. Right, thank you. Um, please stay with us, Mr. Kovika Vito, um, if you can hear us. Um, generally, what recommendations will you give to improving um, safety, food safety in Ghana? Um, from policy, it, from private players, in, in terms of the totality, how can we improve food safety um, in Ghana? You know, before I get there, let me just piggyback on what she when you said about uh, 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 the way people spray food with yes. uh, um, um, Mosqu- all these insecticides uh, and mosquito quails. Insecticides, and, but you see, there's not even the spraying; it's even the growing of the food. Right. And if you notice lately, even popo popo, right. which which grows on top of a tree. Right. Okay, it's not the best for poor. Mm. Mangoes. Mm. You put a mango down, two days, the mango uh, will not even ripe. Mm. One week, it will not ripe. Mm. One month, the mango will not ripe. Before you could say, Jack, the mango is rotten. Mm. So I'm asking myself, well, how are these food being, uh, 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 you know, be, are we growing them? Grow? You know, and, and, and things like banana. Do you know you can't even smell banana anymore? Mm. Banana. Mm. So what is what is used to grow the banana? Look, what is interesting that we have advantage of that, that we can make it better is outside, I'm talking about Europe and North America, what they are now going back to is what is called organic... Organic options. Options. We already have the organic options. Mm. Okay, I remember my mother had uh, uh, a chicken in the house. Okay. Uh, uh, she called it Dachi Meyeyi. The chicken <laughs> roam around. Uh, nobody killed it. Before we could realize somebody has stolen the chicken. We, you know, what happened to free range chicken? Mm. Okay. Now we are doing all this chemical, this, uh, you know, uh, 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 maximum production of everything. And that also has to be looked at. Okay. Let me tell you what. 
something like salad. We all like salad. We've been advised and told that greens is good for you. Right. Salad is good for you. But most of the time, the events that we go to, the salad is not even on ice. Mm. Do you know salad is supposed to be served on ice? Mm. Salad is supposed to be cold. Mm. Salad is not supposed to be warm. Mm. We all go because we've been told that salad is good for us. We don't even know the soft and even the way the salad is grown. Mm. Every, if you walk from uh, Kaneshi Runabout all the way to the GPC, see the way they grow vegetables over mm. there. Okay, and then it ends up on our table. So the question is, what are we doing? Yes, I can advise. Make sure that you buy things that are not, uh, that, 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 that looks very, very healthy. Mm. I'm talking about if you go and the, and the contemporary week looks weak like they put it on fire. Mm. Please stay away with it. Mm. I mean, stay away from it. If you go and, and your pepper has some black spots on it, why are you going to buy pepper is supposed to be red or green mm. so why would you want to buy pepper that has black spots on it tomatoes onions everything okay the question is we the consumers also has a responsibility yes the authority is the last people who should make sure that people flouting the wall uh, the laws are punished and held to books but we should take our lives Mm. in our own hands mm. and say that I'm not going to patronize, okay? Especially when you know that how the woman prepares, some women don't even wash their hands. Mm. Okay? I mean, why would you want to go and buy uh, rice from somebody that uses... I remember when I was growing up, until Pierre Water came, remember we all used to drink from the same cup? Right. Right. The lady selling the water will use the same cup right. to sell a hundred people right. if she if she sells it to hundred people. Right. But now, because we understand, we are buying pure water. Mm. Okay, which is an individualistic thing. Mm. But the question is, we should be responsible as consumers. The regulators are also responsible to protect us. But the first person who should make sure that his or her life mm. is protected is the consumer. Mm. Mm. It's a consumer. Look, we cannot be doing this thing to ourselves as Ghanaians. And now, because of greed, because of money, some regulators don't even care. Mm. Because if you have assemblies, okay, if you have municipal uh, 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 chief executives and all these people, DC, uh, what, what are they called? DC is right? The municipal and district uh, chief executives. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what are their responsibilities? Right. To the markets. Right. Okay. Every municipal assembly or district assembly has a health inspectorate department. Right. The question is, how many people are employed at the health, you know, inspectorate department, department. to make sure that people who are in our markets? Mm. I remember as a kid in Kumasi Central Market, do you know all the gates can be locked? For people not to go in or not to leave the place, they used to wash the floor of Central Market with pure water. Interesting. I mean, I'm talking about pipe on water. Interesting. Now, I, I mean, yes, I'm telling you, I can anybody who, who, who grew up in Kumasi. Mm. What a Mokola Market. When I was brought from Kumasi at the age of about 11, I lived in Okaishi. Okaishi is closer to Mokola Market. I used to go there. It was a clean market. Mm. Now, go there. Mm. You, I mean, they're doing something that we don't have to do, especially when it comes to food, hygiene, and the safety of the human beings in Ghana. Mr. Gabito, let's stay on some of the issues, urbanization and population growth. I mean, it's, it's not without a doubt that most of these issues has come with urbanization and the growth of the population. What would be your advice in terms of, yes, consumers need to take responsibility for their lives, but they must have a right in, 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 in this evolving urbanization and this culture of increasing population. Um, you, you speak about organic options. How, how do we, as a nation, as, as, uh, as a consumer protection agency, what would be your word to a viewer who is listening to say that, yes, populations are not going to get any lesser. Urbanization is not going to make the issues any lesser to solve. But how do we solve it anyway? You know what is interesting is we, we have advantage. 
do you know any place in Ghana? Okay, if you if you if, if you throw away mage or anything mm -hmm. that can germinate, wait till it rains before you say Jack it is growing. Mm. So we are very lucky. We come from an area that in terms of organic, we would be very, 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 very much uh, 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 um, uh, lucky that we can actually grow our own organic things in our neighborhoods, in the backyard, anywhere. Okay, but what is happening at the moment with urbanization? If you look at the advanced countries, they've come up with packaged foods. Mm. Okay, food on the go, mm. drive through. Mm. That is what they are doing. Right. Okay, yes, with, with, with increase of population, they always come up with various ways of actually improving uh, some of the things that, yes, even though it's a packaged food or food to go, they make sure that it is packaged and delivered properly. Now, even in Ghana, don't we have Uber Eats? Right. Yes, we have Uber Eats. Right. We have Django people. We have the, is it Gobo or Bubu or <laughs> the, those motorbikes? Right. Nova and all those people. Right. Okay, but that does not negate that the food should be prepared in a hygienic way. Look, let me tell you what. FDA is doing so well that they are even training some of the restaurant owners about how they should prepare their foods. Do you know if you are handling food, you're supposed to put on uh, some gal. Mm. You're supposed to put on a cap. Mm. The cap will prevent hairs mm. from your top of your head getting into the food. You are supposed to serve food with a glove. Mm. Okay, all these things, they teach people at the FDA. But the question is, how are people aware of it? Right. Right, thank you. Let, now, having brought that, let's go to Madame Faustina. And, and once Mr. Capito talked about gowns and hairnets and gloves, can you run us through, if a vendor is listening to um, Spotlight today, what should they do in order to make their food a little more safer for their consumers? Okay, so... Okay, so in making your food safe, we consider right from um, selection of food or food items up to the point where you are serving it. So in the first place, when you are going to buy your food ingredients, which ingredients are you buying? Now, we've heard of stories of um, food vendors going and patronizing rotten vegetables right. because, as you said, they it's are cheaper. cheaper option. But you need to bear your consumer in mind. So your vegetable or your food ingredient selection should be ingredients that are of high quality. Now, after you've selected your ingredients, in the preparation of the food, look at your environment. Your environment has to be clean. If there are any refuse around, you have to make sure that your environment is as clean as it can be. If there's a gutter close to you, your gutter should not be choked and having flies hovering all over it because the flies will move from the gutter and settle on the food. And in preparing the food, apart from your environment, what water source are you using? you have to make sure that the water source that you are using to prepare the food for your customers to eat is a good water source. And you, the person handling the food, or you, the person preparing the food, as Mr. Capito said, you have to be dressed appropriately. If your hair should fall in the food, that, is, that can pose a risk to your customer or the person who would eat your food. So you need to cover your hair. Mm. We need to um, wear gloves and also even if, depending on the food you are preparing, sometimes you would have to do it with your bare hands. And if you are handling food with your bare hand, hand washing is one of the easiest ways that we can use to ensure that our, our food is being prepared under hygienic condition. I mean, COVID has made us know so how, how important hand washing is to the human being. So. Mm. We cannot overemphasize it that if you are using your bare hands to cook or to handle the food, you should always make sure that you wash your hands in, t in between the meals. And also when handling food, okay. there is a general rule, for instance, if you should cut um, raw meat on a certain chopping board, 
it's not advisable to cut vegetables on it. If you, it's recommended that you have separate boards for separate items. So for the raw foods, they need to be done on a separate board. And then the ones that are like the fresh foods, like the vegetables can be chopped on a different board. Now, having prepared the food, obviously when it comes to food preparation in Ghana, I keep on saying, we over expose the food to high temperatures. So let's assume that you've exposed the food to high temperatures, the microorganisms have all been destroyed. Now in displaying the food to be served, how is the food presented? It has to be covered. Mm. And when it comes to vegetables, for instance, you realize that when you go to your popular watch seller, there's um, vegetable salad in a bowl. Mm. Salads should be served under cold temperatures. Mm. So if you are going to buy food from a vendor and then, and basically that's the practice in Ghana, salads are in a normal bowl mm. being stored under normal temperatures. Mm. And under these temperatures, microorganisms in these vegetables thrive and they will multiply. So over time, you realize that the salad poses a risk and can easily cause a foodborne borne illness. So most of the time when people get food borne illness, you ask them, they're like, oh, salad na me di, you know, right. or the coleslaw I ate. Right. It's one of the easiest ways that we get um, food borne illnesses in Ghana because it's not being served under the right temperature. Right. Let, let, let's also, let's, yeah. let's ra wrap it up with the, sh uh, uh, Madam Fosse, let's ra wrap it up. In, in terms of consumer perceptions of food, I mean, take fufu, um, take wache. Um, people would ordinarily say that um, there has to be a certain perception that um, the closer it is to home and where home sometimes may be very um, or at least look very unhygienic. Mm. Just one word or just uh, one minute in, in terms of touching to consumer perception of food, whether it's uh, the appetite, whether or, or how, how delicious it may be. Um, to how unsavory it may look or it may appear. So speak to consumer perception briefly if a viewer is watching, and then we'll round up with Mr. Capito. Okay, so what I would like to tell consumers is you are responsible for your life. At the end of the day, you are responsible for your choices. So in the very best of our power, we should make sure that we make healthy choices and safe choices for our body. We shouldn't um, compromise safety for taste or even um, budget or let's say our economic power. Safety is very important. So if you are going to buy food and the environment is not hygienic, you realize the vendor is not even hi dressed hygienically, looks unkempt and all that, you are responsible for your life. So please make the best decision or the best safety decision that you can make for yourself. All right, thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, first in our Fuzu Aminta, who is a dietitian, it's been an honor having you. Um, thank you for sharing thank with you. us. Um, Mr. Govi Capito, are you there? Can you hear us? Uh, um, can you yes, hear? Yes, I'm here. Yes, so your concluding words. I can what, hear you. Yes, um, what would be your concluding? We've come from a history where our foods, um, perception, general perception about our foods and how home it may be may may look very close to fufu for example they say when the sweat hits um the pound it tastes sweeter how how, how do you speak to the general perception if people are uh viewers are, are are watching you see it is it is not science or it's not evidence based it's basically based on uh, uh the way people feel or the way uh uh, the story has been passed on from generation to generation. Uh, but what I would say is there is the partner principle in consumerism that says is the consumer beware. Mm. So that is what I'll leave the consumers with. You should always beware of what you buy, what you spend your money on. on you know what? The danger about food is once it gets into your stomach, you see, you can put a cream, you can put on a shirt, you can put on a shoe, but the food gets into your body. Mm. Once it's in your body, it is difficult for anybody, even the medical people, 
sometimes need to do a lot of hard work before they can even identify what is wrong with you. Mm. So what would I advise consumers? Consumers are, like I'm saying, beware and beware and beware. Mm. Thank you so much, Mr. Capito. Um, it's been an honor having you and Madam Fosina Ofosua Minta. Um, thank you for <laughs> sharing with us. Um, um, thank you, Yao. So have a great evening. Uh, viewers, so we've been talking about food safety. They say whatever the problem, education is the answer. Um, it, it's obvious that we need to pay attention to food and what we eat because you may as well be eating um, your death pushing. We're told that there is poison in, in the food. Um, this is going back to scripture for as many as believe in the Bible. So um, you may be eating, but you may ask, may as well be eating your last meal. So please, as, as, as our, our, our guest and our experts ended with, beware. It, take responsibility for your life. Take responsibility for what you consume. Educate yourself learn about the issues about food safety because if the food is not safe you may as well not be eating food and so um this is spotlight we've been talking about food safety and your responsibility my name is yao sompa and it's been an honor serving you thank you for choosing us <laughs>